Welcome to Streaming with Barracks, a basic tutorial for setting up and using the Barracks in Streamer 100, sponsored by StreamGuys. As you can see, the Barracks in Streamer 100 has a lot of key features which make it an ideal choice for an audio streaming encoder. In this tutorial, we'll show you how to set up your Barracks box and stream your media content to a CDN or content delivery network provider such as StreamGuys. In addition to your barracks box, there are a few other things you're going to need to get your stream started. They are an audio input source, an internet connection with router, and a web browser for initial setup. As for parts, you may have noticed that your barracks in streamer comes only with a power supply and an RCA cable. However, there are additional components which you will need in order to configure your barracks box for streaming. Those additional components are an earphone and a network cable. Now, let's take a quick look at the front and back ports on the InStreamer 100. The reset button is for setting the box back to its factory settings should it ever need to be done. The serial port allows data to be relayed to another barracks device, a PC, or server using the serial gateway functionality of the InStreamer firmware. The infrared out port is for remote control command relaying. The red and green status LEDs show whether or not your InStreamer 100 is functioning properly. The headphone out port is where you can plug in an earphone. The RJ45 port is where you will plug in your network cable. If you have a digital audio source, then you'd plug the coaxial and optical cable into the appropriate SP diff port. If your audio source is analog, then you can plug your RCA cable into the left and right RCA line inputs. And of course, the power in port is where you plug in the InStreamer's power adapter. In the next few slides, we'll go over how to get your InStreamer 100 powered up and ready to be configured for streaming. The first thing you'll need to do is plug a CAT5 network cable into the RJ45 network port of the InStreamer, and then plug the other end of that CAT5 cable into your network router. Now, plug an earphone or headphone into the headphone output port and put it into your ear. Then make sure you have a pen and paper ready to write down the IP address that will be announced by the InStreamer. Now, plug the power supply into the power port located on the back of the InStreamer 100 and plug the other end into a 120 volt AC power outlet. Once it's powered up, the InStreamer will search for a DHCP server to get an IP address from. Once it obtains one, it will then announce that IP address vocally over the earphone or headphone. Make sure you write this IP address down because you will need it to configure the InStreamer 100 for streaming. If no DHCP server is found, then the InStreamer's IP Zader function will search the network for a free IP address. This could take up to approximately 5 minutes. If the IP address is still not announced within that time, Check to see if the yellow LED, which is the right LED on top of the network port, is lit. If it's unlit, check your network cable. If the front LEDs are also not lit, then check the power cable as well. If the network and front LEDs are lit, but it still fails to announce an IP address, you can revert the InStreamer 100 back to its factory defaults by pressing the reset button for about 5 seconds while the InStreamer is on. Then listen again for the announcement of the IP address. Once the IP address is announced, your Barracks InStreamer 100 should now be ready to be configured for streaming. Okay, now it's time to connect your audio device to the InStreamer 100. Connect the RCA outputs of your audio source device to the RCA inputs of the InStreamer 100. Then, turn on your audio source device. You should now be able to hear your source audio through the earphone or headphone that you plugged into the InStreamer 100 earlier. Please note that if you are connecting to a digital audio source, 
you'll need to check the InStreamer 100's user manual for connection and or additional configuration instructions. In the next few steps, we'll cover how to configure your InStreamer 100 for streaming. Okay, now it's time to get out that piece of paper we had you write down the InStreamer 100's IP address on earlier. Uh, you did remember to write down the IP address, didn't you? Oh, okay, good, good. Now, on a computer that's on the same internal network as your InStreamer 100, open up a web browser and type in that IP address. Hit enter and you should immediately see the main status page of the InStreamer 100's configuration interface. Once that loads, then click on the configuration button located on the left hand side of the page under the InStreamer graphic. Now you should be on the settings page. Along the top you'll see a series of tabs. Go ahead and select the audio tab. From there you can select an audio input source. For example, line in, SPDIF optical, or SPDIF coaxial. You can also select your channel mode, either mono or stereo. And you can select an encoding and sampling frequency. The most commonly used is MPEG-2, 44.1 kHz. Note that 44.1 kHz is the sampling frequency. To choose an MPEG encoder quality setting, look at this chart and choose a quality number that best fits the sampling frequency we just mentioned and also the bit rate you're going to stream at. For example, if your sample rate is 44.1 kHz and you want to stream at a bit rate of 128 kbps, then your quality setting would be 6. Remember that the bit rates shown on the chart are averages and not exact numbers, so as long as you choose one that's close to the actual bit rate you want to stream at, you'll be okay. Oh, and don't forget to save your changes by clicking the Apply button at the bottom of the page. Now it's time to tell the InStreamer 100 what server you want to send your stream to so that people can tune in. To get started, first click on the Streaming tab and enter in the name of your stream or station in the Own Name box. This can be anything you want. For example, if the name of your station is KKTY, then put in KKTY. Now, if you're going to be sending your stream to an IceCast server, you'll first need to give it a mount point name. The best name at convention for this would be to name it something that best describes your stream. For instance, if your station ID is KKTY and your bitrate is 32 kbps, then you might want to name your mount point KKTY-32 kbps. Next, if you're sending your stream to a Shoutcast server, you'll need to tell your barracks device whether or not to automatically send your information to Shoutcast's main website to be listed there. You could do so by selecting either public or private from the Shoutcast stream drop-down box. Now you'll need to tell the InStreamer 100 the server type you'll be sending your stream to. To do this, under Stream, select Shoutcast Source or Icecast Source as your con type. Then enter in an IP address and port number of the server you're going to be streaming to. To save your changes, do again as we did in the last step and click Apply at the bottom of the page. OK, now for the final step. Click on the Security tab and enter in your password into the ICE slash Shoutcast box. Now click the Apply button at the bottom of the page to save your changes just as we've done in the previous steps, and that's it. Congratulations! Your InStreamer 100 should now be streaming.